right, so here we're looking at another example from section 6.2 where we're finding the area in between curves. So for this one, we're given three functions. So we're given the function f of x equals x cubed, e of x equals negative 1 eighth x cubed, and h of x equals negative 1. So what we want to do is we want to find the area enclosed by all three of those functions, which would be this area right here. We're looking to find the area of this shape. And what we need to do is, well, first we need to figure out, well, first of all, what we need to do is that we need to figure out where these intersect. So here, this is a really nice picture. Um, I did this using Desmos, D-E-S-M-O-S dot -S com. You can find the intersection points really fast and easily on that website by just clicking on where you think they're going to intersect. So for example, if we were on Desmos and you just click here, then this would show up. But um, let's say that you're doing an exam or something and you just have Desmos and you wanted to figure out where these functions intersect. So the way you figure out where the functions intersect, just in case it's been a while since you did this, you take x to the third. So let's say we want to figure out where f of x and z of x intersect. And you set this equal. And then you solve for x from there. So when does x to the third equal negative 1 eighth? x to the third, well we could add 1 eighth x to the third both sides. What we get is 9 eighth x to the third equals 0. Well that's only going to equal 0 when x equals 0, so we know that they intersect at 0, 0. Alright, similarly if you wanted to figure out where um, negative 1 and x to the third intersect, you can do the same thing where you set them equal to each other and solve for x. Now let's get on to the calculus. So, first, if I look at this function, well, if I look at this area here, I see that my function, <clears throat> x cubed, so this is x cubed, is on top. So then after I hit this point, what happens is then I have negative 1 8 x cubed on top. And notice that this function, negative 1, is always on the bottom. So what I need to do is I need to split this up into two areas, or two problems. So I'm going to split this up into two areas. I'm going to have this area here and this area here. So first, I'm going to find the area of this shape here. So to find the area of that shape, I'm going to be taking the integral from negative 1 until, well, this is 0. And my top function is x to the third. And I need to subtract my bottom function, which is just a constant function, negative 1. Wow, that is like mad shaky. Let me rewrite that for you guys. All right, so that first area that we're looking at is going to be the integral from negative 1 to 0, x to the third, minus the bottom function, which is the constant function, 1, dx. So if we evaluate that area, so take the antiderivative and evaluate for negative 1 to 0, we are going to get the area is equal to 3. Now what we need to do is we need to add to that this area over here. So we need to take the integral from 0 to 2. But now my top function is negative 1 8 x to the third minus, and my bottom function is still a constant function negative 1. If I evaluate this, what I'm going to get is 3 halves. So this area over here is 3 halves. So to find the total area between negative 1 and 2, or the enclosed area of all three of these functions, I just need to add these together, which is going to give me 9 fourths as my answer. So remember, the key to this is realizing what's your bottom function, what are your top functions, and where do they change. So here, our top function changed from x to the third to negative 1 eighth x to the third between 0 and 2. Alright, now that we're done with that one, why don't we take a look at a slightly different problem. Let's take a look at the problem where instead of looking at functions of x, what we are now looking at are, oops, are expressions or relationships where we have our y terms. So here we have y terms. What we want to do is that we want to find the area in between these two functions. So the area enclosed, we're going to be looking at 
this area here, the simplest that you can find. So, to find those areas, what we need to do is that, well, first, we know that we have to take the integral, but we have to decide what's our top function, quote unquote, and what's our bottom function. So, if we're looking at these two relationships, well, instead of doing top and bottom, since, well, our relationships aren't looking like tops and bottoms, and they're not even functions, really. Instead, when we're looking at functions with x and y, instead of doing top minus bottom, what we are going to do is that we are going to write minus left. So if we look at this function, this is my right-hand function, and this is the function to the left of the area. So this red one, this red line here, that's y squared minus 1. And then this one over here, that's the other one. So what we are going to have is we are going to have the integral of the right-hand function, which is going to be y squared minus 1 eighth y to the fourth plus 1 minus the left-hand function, which is y squared now, be careful, because when we're putting the bounds on this integral, remember, we're looking for the y's that we're going between. So we're not going between negative 1 and 3, because that's on the x-axis. We want to know where our functions intersect and move on the y-axis. So they're going between negative 2 to positive 2. So remember, to make sure that your bounds match the variable that's inside of your um, antiderivative. So, if we actually evaluate this antiderivative, what we are going to get is that our area is equal to 32 fifths. So, this area is 32 fifths. Great. So, that is it. Remember that if you are doing um, functions in terms of x, you want to do top minus bottom, but if they are in terms of y, you want to do right minus left. It's easy to tell if you ever get this order mixed up because if the order gets mixed up, your function, or I'm sorry, your answer is going to be negative. So you just know that you have to flip those around.